Tiffany, and I'm uh, representing Michigan State University. And I um, had a question um, concerning black women. Um, according to the film, it said that um, this um, self-defense rhetoric was kind of spearheaded by um, the violence that was perpetuated on the, the black woman's body. And I want to know, can you tell me how did black women encourage or discourage the ideas of carrying arms? And also, can you speak to the linkage of the self-defense ideas of the 60s and 70s to the Renisha McBride case? Let me just speak quickly to the historical role of women in our struggle in Monroe, North Carolina. <clears throat> Many people who supported that local branch of the NAACP, which was a radical branch that was made up of working class people as opposed to the black bourgeoisie per se, um, were involved, but their involvement had to be kind of uh, clandestine because, you know, if you had a job, if you could get a job in that kind of environment, economic pressure was always a means that they used to try to control our people. And so many times the women uh, were played critical roles in terms of intelligence gathering, in terms of the networking, because when the men, when there was a call uh, to meet at a particular location to defend a member of the guard, the women were usually the ones who were doing the calling and making uh, the connections while the men were actually out in the fields and headed to uh, whatever location they needed to be at. So the women were very, very active in everything that happened in terms of the struggle on the front lines, the young, the young women and the uh, girls uh, were involved in the nonviolent struggle uh, and also they train as well uh, with the young men. I'd like to make one comment. I'm, uh, 